who needs a class one license when running a business? So let's think about how you run a business. You either run your business as, and we're talking business as in an agency. So you either run your, your business as a company or a corporation or, you know, a proprietary limited company and whether a trust owns that and it's a trust trading as a proprietary limited company or whatever you, however you've got that as trustee for, so however you've got it set up, there's a corporate entity there. Or you're in a partnership with somebody else and that's a, a recognised partnership or you are a sole trader. No matter how you've set your business up, any one of those you know, three basic categories, you need a class one licensed person to be a licensee in charge. Now, whether that's you as the owner of that agency or whether you employ someone. So you may only have a class two license and you may employ a class one license holder to be your licensee in charge. You may be a class one license holder, but still want to, you know, don't want to be full time in the business and want to have a licensee in charge there for you. That's all okay. So long as there is a class one license holder, and yes, there are some requirements around that, but, you know, as you're setting up your business, you know, your accountant, your solicitor, us, we can talk to you about, you know, what your requirements are there from a fair trading perspective. Now, let's move on to the next one where there are independent contractors. Now, I'm not talking commission only here because commission only people are employees. So if you are being paid commission only, and it's just you and whether you're being, you know, if you're being paid as you as an individual, then you are an employee. Okay, so that comes back to you just happen to get commission a certain way and there are certain requirements around that. And under the award, uh, there's, and we've done newsletters on this, we've done previous Facebook Lives, on it, particularly newsletters, or go and have a look at the REEF website, the Real Estate Employers Federation website that has some really good information around how the award deals with, you know, as commission-only employees. Now, separate from that, some people within our industry work as independent contractors. Now, again, there are some quite specific rules about this, but and they don't come just from the real estate industry. They come from uh, New South Wales Revenue in terms of what makes an independent contractor. And I've talked about this, I've, I've talked about this many times in terms of checking out whether you are a real independent contractor, go on and do the test. The online test doesn't go anywhere. It just gives you some feedback about whether New South Wales Revenue regards you as an independent contractor or not. Uh, so you answer some questions and it spits out an answer. Change your answers to some other and it might give you a different answer. So you can see how you can be structured in that way. Now, if you are an independent contractor, so you are being paid to your business. You might employ some other people that work with you within your little business, within another business. But in essence, if you are an independent contractor, you are running your own business. So that brings us to Section 31 of the uh, Property and Stock Agents uh, Act, which is the holder of a Class 1 licence to be in charge of the business. Now, an individual who carries on business under a licence other than a Class 1 licence must employ an individual with a class one license to be in charge of that business. So whatever, whether it's you or whether it's somebody else, you have to be a class one license holder to run a business or a class one license holder needs to be running a business. So if you are an independent contractor, if you are being paid to your company, to your personal account, to you know, and you are not an, a commission only employee, you are regarding yourself as an independent contractor. So you're paying your own super, you're paying your own insurances, you're paying, you know, this is, you are a contractor to the umbrella business or the umbrella agency that is uh, contracting you, then you need to hold a Class 1 licence. Now, if you want, go and have a look at Section 31 of the Act, and that will be very clear to you about how that works. Now, the reason I'm stressing it now, it's the, you know, kind of the middle of January. You have until the 22nd of March to transition from a Class 2 to a Class 1 if you have held your licence for two years prior to the 20th 23rd of March last year. Okay, so if when the when the uh, reforms commenced on the 23rd of March last year, if on the 22nd you had a license and two years prior to that you've held you'd also held a license and you'd held it all of that time and hadn't let it lapse or any of those other issues, then you are eligible to transition automatically straight across to a class one. Get your application in. Okay, so that is online, it's through fair trading, make it happen. Okay, because after, if you leave this till after the 23rd of March, so in a couple of months' time, you will need to upgrade to a diploma of property. You will also need to provide a work experience logbook 
from your licensee in charge that shows your previous two years uh, skills and experience. Okay, so not, not hard to do either of those, but if you do it before then, then it's a grandfather, an exemption that is available for that. So guys, I guess I'm really pushing here the fact that if you are an independent contractor and you're as a sole trader or a partnership or even as a as your own proprietary limited company and you hold a corporation license on that, you need to, well, to hold a corporation license, you need to be a class one license holder uh, and you need to be a class one license holder to be an independent contractor. So I think I've stressed that quite enough now, but it is a question that we're getting asked all the time. You've got another couple of months to get this across the line. If you've got more questions, call us at the college. Anyone here will be able to help you with the answers to that.